Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Liz here with another video for you. And today, what I wanted to do for my first Manny back um, after spending three days in the hospital last week for an emergency appendectomy, um, it was a lot scarier than it sounds. Um, but because of the new COVID restrictions and stuff like that, I had to spend a little bit more time in the um, hospital than I probably normally would have. I'm finally filling up to doing another Manny and I wanted my first Manny back to be kind of a tribute um, to all of the hospital workers that helped out during my stay and for my recovery. The first color that I wanted to use was a more of a navy color. So the hospital that I went to, Tamaki Valley Hospital, um, their nurses wear a navy color uniform. So I wanted to do kind of a navy color to represent them. I had two nurses in particular that were pretty much there with me the entire time. Uh, the supporting staff kind of changed throughout my stay. Um, but these two nurses were there with me pretty much the entire time. Um, Brandy, and I don't know her last name, and Blaine. And they just were amazing people, so friendly, took care of me, and I really appreciated everything that they did for me. So this is to represent them, as well as there were a lot of great nurses that helped out um, in the emergency room that took care of me when I was in the emergency room. The nurses and stuff, they were just, um, they were really friendly and when it's like nobody could come and visit me. So that was nice having them there. Of course, technology nowadays, you know, I FaceTime my family and kept them up in the loop. So this green color, kind of represents my surgical team and my surgical doctor that took care of me during the surgery. They were the green scrubs. They really were an amazing set of people and I only got to interact with them for a very short time. Surgery went like so smoothly, but again, they were very reassuring, made the experience as comfortable as possible. Um, and I really appreciated that. Um, go for that <laughs> talk. Um, and then the white, I'm going to do white on these three fingers. That kind of represents all of the supporting staff that's there um, that were helping out during my stay. The nurses assistants, all of the cafeteria workers. So now I am in recovery. Recovery phase. And this is my recovery is going fine. It's has it been a week yet? Actually, it'll be a week tonight. My whole experience, okay, so if you're interested in hearing the entire story, if not, you can just, you know, mute it and just watch me work if you want to. Um, but my entire experience there at the hospital, so I actually went to a um, urgent care facility first because I really didn't know what was going on with me. I was hoping that I was overreacting. I kind of told my husband, it kind of felt like um, because of the spot that I was hurting and the way that it wasn't going away, that it felt to me like it might be, be blah, blah, blah. it might be my appendix. It didn't feel like severe, but it felt like it may be my appendix. So I went to an urgent care actually first. I'm gonna turn this, this is my dust collector, so I'm gonna turn that on while I brush off all of my dust here. Might be a little loud, sorry. I'm gonna leave the white on there for right now. Um, so I went to urgent care first and uh, they said, yeah, it looks like it's an appendicitis, so you're gonna have to go to the emergency room. Uh, kind of my biggest fear or you know what I really didn't want it to be um, but I went to the emergency room by myself my husband was at home with the kids trying to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing for their schoolwork and stuff and this was a Tuesday 
last Tuesday. Um, so I, yeah, went into the emergency room, told them what was going on, and they got me back pretty quickly. I mean, they, I guess they figured it probably wasn't an emergency if I could like breathe through the pain and talk through the pain. They, but they went ahead and did a few tests and um, did some blood work and decided that I needed a CAT scan. I've never had a CAT scan in my life. And these things, they're not really scary, but it's just like you hear about stuff like that and you're just kind of like, what? Is it that serious? Do I need a CAT scan? That sounds expensive. So I really didn't want to get the CAT scan. <laughs> uh, but um, my husband's just like, just do what you need to do. So got the CAT scan, they did some, um, other ultrasound to make sure that it wasn't something else. Because um, as women, we've got a lot of stuff going on down there. Was it necessarily just my appendix that was of concern when you're hurting um, in that lower right quadrant of your abdomen? So they did all that and they pretty much concluded that yes it was probably my appendix. My appendix looked a little bit enlarged. Wasn't ab that abnormally large, but like I said, uh, like this was I felt like very early on. I wasn't in in too much pain the entire time that I was there. Um, I mean they didn't have to give me like very strong pain medication or anything when I came in. Because it just, it, I mean, it was painful, yeah, especially when you touched it. It was painful, but it wasn't, I could walk around, I could, you know, talk through the pain. So it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. And, um, I mean, they could tell with the CAT scans too that it wasn't an emergency, it wasn't any risk of rupturing at the moment, but it did need to come out. So, they went ahead and admitted me. And as soon as you get admitted, you have to get tested for COVID. Even though you don't have any symptoms, if you're admitted to the hospital, you have to get tested for COVID. And, you know, they have like a whole different uh, floor of the hospital for COVID patients. So um, if you're even showing signs of, of COVID, then I think you have to go to that. But I didn't have any signs. Um, of COVID, I didn't think that I had been exposed to COVID, so in that case they just swab me, just make sure, and they put you in a room for a non-COVID patient. So, and they are very, you know, they're getting low on, where my area was not affected at the beginning. Um, I am in California, but area that I'm at was had very low cases up until just recently so they are getting low in beds right now but this it's just been a recent occurrence I'm trying to decide if I need to do a third coat of these colors I'm also trying to get a snack in so my energy levels don't drop unexpectedly so um, I'm not really sure. I, I didn't really ask. I know that um, they would have done the surgery if it was an emergency right away if my results had not come back in time. And, I, and they felt like I was at risk for my appendix rupturing or if it was more of an emergency. But because it was not an emergency, they had to wait for my COVID results to come back. <clears throat> But because in, in appendicitis, it's pretty serious. And it does have a chance of rupturing. I had to spend the night so that they could monitor me. And then plus, they didn't really know when it was gonna come back. And they knew that they were gonna do the surgery as soon as I came back. So they wanted me to stick around. And because they were planning on doing the surgery, as soon as these results came back, I could not eat. So I sat in the hospital and I had not eaten since Monday night because Tuesday I went straight to the urgent care pretty much as soon as I could and really my appetite was completely gone so 
I really didn't feel like eating. I wasn't hungry. But then after that first night in the hospital, I'm like, I could use something. Like even if it was just like a little broth or something. But um, yeah, me, because they didn't know when the test results were gonna come back or when I might have my surgery, I was not allowed to eat at all for the first um, first two days. So Tuesday and Wednesday, I had nothing to eat at all. And then my test results came back Wednesday night at like eight o'clock. And so they immediately like got the OR ready and got me in there as quickly as they could. So I had my surgery Wednesday night at 8.30. So we're about, um, right now it's six o'clock. So we're about two and a half hours from my surgery, my one week anniversary. <laughs> I decided to put a little bit of sparkle on these white nails because I feel like they need something. So they, and it was really quick. They were done in about an hour and I was in the little recovery room that they have right there for about an hour. So I didn't get back to my room uh, until almost 11 to let my husband know that they did the surgery and everything went well. And then I went to sleep and woke up at like three o'clock in the morning um, I couldn't go back to sleep after that. I'm dying, I'm hungry, my appetite's starting to come back. I haven't eaten in two days. I told my nurse Brandy, like, please, find me <laughs> So she found me some, um, I don't know if y'all have ever had that uh, sugar-free jello from the hospital. I'm just, I'm not a sugar-free kind of person. I don't like the sugar-free stuff, so. Was not my favorite thing. But I was definitely thankful to have something, so I ate that and then asked her if she could find me something else. So she found me some more jello and some applesauce. Uh, and I ate that. And then um, they put me on an all liquid diet while I was while I was there at the hospital. So that was really fun. Um, you know, being starving and all you can do is eat liquids. I know it was for my, the best, you know, they're, they're true. Especially when you have an um, abdominal or anything with your small or large intestines, that appendix come out, you want to make sure that foods aren't going to upset anything. Um, so hopefully you can hear that whole story. Ugh. All right, so we got all of our colors on. So now we're going to do a some clear. Super nail. And I find that the easiest way to make sure that this stuff is not getting contaminated is to just pour a little bit into the key corner. Like that. Like I said, yeah, everybody took really good care of me. Definitely very impressed with the surgical team there. They were very nice. And they seemed like they, they worked really well together. I might have to take a break here. After all of this, it was really still kind of feels um, not great sitting up straight. Um, I got laparoscopic, a laparoscopic appen appendectomy. So, got three little incisive incisions. One's on my belly button, and two are under my underwear. <laughs> so, you should be able to, uh, you shouldn't really be able to see them. I don't know, am I supposed to flash on? Alright, so now we're gonna activate, and then I'm gonna have to take a break. Alright. 
Bojack. And oh, I have to take a break. So we are back finishing up this Manny. I got started on it yesterday and just didn't have the energy yesterday to finish it up. Um, I did do my filing and buffing in bed um, because that was where I was most, most comfortable doing my filing and buffing. So, um, got all that done, so we're ready to do the art that I had planned for this Manny. Um, but if anybody has any very quick styling <laughs> advice for me, because, you know, I like, I am very low maintenance everything. So, like, I just want something that I can maybe spritz my hair, just kind of like scrunch up and, and go. Uh, if you've got any advice for me. I, I mean, and I don't even know if this curly girl method is gonna work for me because my, my hair just might not be curly enough. It's just got this kind of wave to it. That might be it. That might be all what I'm stuck with. But anyway, my daughter has like really pretty curly hair. So um, while she was doing it, I was doing it with her to, you know, just so I could kind of get a feel for it a little bit more. Anyway. Um, so what I had planned was like a stethoscope kind of coming across these three nails and kind of doing a little heart on the middle finger. Um, so the heart, what I want to do is I want to use this red chrome pit pen from Hangry Dips. Um, I got this top coat from them as well. And then I've got these little pink ring things that I got from Infila. They sent me these out and um, I really wanted to try them out. They're really cool little rings. You can just like kind of put them on while you're doing your um, nail art. Um, they're so versatile too. You can also kind of just use them to swatch your nail polish or gel polish and, I've, and then you just have a swatch that's right there with your models so you don't have to you know, look for your swatch to figure out what color that you want. It's all right there. Um, especially if you do nails for anybody else, having that swatch right there next to the bottle is very helpful. Especially when all of it, all they have is like numbers on the top to decipher or just distinguish which one is which. But how am I supposed to know that there's purple in that bottle? You know, it's just a, it's just a number. So that's, um, I feel like this is going to be really helpful. All right, so I'm gonna try and put just a little bit of this gel top coat. And since I'm chroming, whenever you chrome, you wanna use the top coat. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in there, and that way I don't have to use the palette to go back and forth. I just have that right there, literally at my fingertips. Uh, and so I'm gonna use just this dotting tool. I'm going to kind of put a dot here. Uh, I think I already effed it up. <laughs> I feel like I already effed it up. Maybe not. Okay. Still got a little bit of a tooth for that uh, polish to kind of 
hang on to. But because this is top, just top coat that I'm using, um, it's not going to hang on without something like, over the top of it. So you definitely have to do this. Oh, I also like that they kind of separate at the bottom. So you can just kind of pull it right off whenever you're done with it. Gonna cure that for seven seconds. A flash cure, and now we get our chrome pen, which all of the chrome powder is in the lid there. Um, so every time we close it and open it, it gets more chrome powder on the pen. And all you have to do. These are so big. So these chrome pens make it so easy to do chroming. You know, this side over here looks a little wonky, but um, I'm also going to put, you know, that stethoscope around it so you can maybe kind of clean up any areas. So I'm going to go ahead and do a 30 second cure to go ahead and cure that all the way through. I have it. A, it's 120 watt nail lamp. So, um, and with this Henry Dips gel polish, it really doesn't take that long to cure um, in my nail lamp. But if you have a nail lamp that is not as strong of a wattage, you may have to cure for a little bit longer when you do a few, full cure. All right, so now we are going to clean up that powder that I did not need. All right, well that did not work. So we're gonna try some alcohol. Not to take my heart off. So I'm gonna put my alcohol in this little dish and use a little paintbrush to try and that off. There's a lot of alcohol right here. I don't know. I'm afraid that it's gonna make the heart come off. It did a little bit, so definitely gotta be more careful. Hello, Anna. Hello, Tessa. How are you doing? I am doing these nails. <laughs> I'm doing a little heart on my nails right now. For Valentine's Day? Uh, some, well, something like that. Um, um, it's for all of the hearts nurses. Hearts for Valentine's Day. Yeah, hearts could be for Valentine's Day. So you Day. have to, they like that for Valentine's Day. Yeah, or I can do another one. This one's more for the nurses and doctors that took care of me while I was in the hospital. There it is. Yeah, do you think that's a good idea? What do you think? <laughs> do you think that's a good idea to do a mani for the nurses and mm -hmm. doctors that took care of me? Rush? Yes. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Actually, really good. A little bit. Alright. So, um, it, just a second, baby. All right, so now I have, uh, I wanted to do like this stethoscope. And I've got these, these are um, acrylic markers and these are my favorite acrylic markers uh, because 
They are a little bit more expensive than some other paint pens or paint markers, but you won't have to buy any more paint pens until these run out. Some paint pens, you'll get them, use them once, won't use them for a while, you come back to them, they're all dried out. These do not have that problem. I have not used these in months, maybe even closer to a year since I've used these. Um, and we are going to try them out and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. My daughter's desk is right next to mine and she's got a ton of paper all over her desk. Um, all right, so yeah, so this one, I mean, look at that. Like I said, I have not opened these in probably close to a year. And as soon as you open them, they're ready to go again. Um, they've got all different kinds of tips. This one is a brush marker. Um, these are a little bit more finicky to work with, cause, I mean, but it's like a paintbrush. For one pen, sometimes it can be about six, six dollars, five to six dollars. So they are a bit of an investment, but you won't have to buy, and like I said, you won't have to buy any more paint pens until these are completely empty. Um, and you shake them just like a normal paint pen to get them going and they're right back to drawing. All right, um, so again, I want to do a stethoscope and I definitely, my hand is shaking like crazy. I wanna F it up now. Okay. I should have done like a little loop. I mean, I guess I still can. I'm just gonna go around it here. Gosh, my hand will not stop shaking. I can draw on my nails, and I am drawing on my nails. Wait, are you on recording? I am recording, yes. Can they hear me? Yeah. No! Do they know I am your child? I don't know, maybe, probably. <laughs> we do now. All right, so let's see. We go up like this. Um, yeah, there we go. I feel like I need to like change the angle of this camera so you're not just like seeing the top of my head while I'm trying to like get under this other camera. Um, I don't know, maybe if I put it lower, we'll see. So this one, maybe go just out. top of the stethoscope.
I don't usually listen to music. Who listens to music while they're doing their... What do you, what do, you do? Listen to music? Do you watch nail videos while you're doing your nails? What do you do while you're doing your nails? Because I don't usually listen to music just because usually I'm kind of like listening for my girls as well. Um, so if I'm by myself, I might listen to music, but if I have my girls in the background, you know, I don't want to not be able to hear them. They need me for whatever reason. Looks like this is kind of like soaking into my nails. So I'm having to go back over a few spots to darken them up. And we're going to go up and do a little twirl. So I'm going to put a few okay, highlights. New town. And it has an A for Abby. I'm the cat. I'm going to go back and forth for a second. So I want to do a small little highlight. And it got a little bit big there. bigger than I wanted it to. So that's kind of what I was looking for. More of a highlight like that. And this one got way too big, so I'll fix that a little bit. Um, now let's see. Right there. And right the little stethoscope's ends. So I'm thinking for these little ends. look like they might need some micron touch-ups all right so another thing that you can use for doing art like this is some micron pens so all right so this is micro line pens they come in different sizes um, 003 005 those are these small ones that you can get. Um, these, I think I got them on, look how little teeny tiny. So really good for like very fine, fine detail. Teeny tiny, teeny teeny tiny. So I'm gonna try and just kind of uh, it's not one to draw on this acrylic. There we go. 
Get some fine details so you can actually see that. I think it's kind of getting some acrylic on the ends of the pin there. I can get enough on there so that you can kind of see the detail of that and then see the detail of these little ear pieces. That is pretty much done. And so now we are going to top coat it. So the gel top coat um, does not like to adhere to the acrylic paint unless it's got something to stick to. So you wanna make sure that you start with a base and you want to make sure that you get apply very thin coats of both. So we are going to apply a very thin coat all the way around with a gel base. Make sure that you remember to cap your ends. And then just to make sure that you don't get any weird pooling, pool, pooling, P-O-L, P-O-O-L, I-N-G, pooling of the liquids while you're painting the other ones. You can go ahead and do like a 10 second flash cure on that or maybe not even need that much. Um, especially with a high wattage lamp. Like maybe five seconds would be enough. Okay, and then we are going to do, and see, and I don't know with the acrylic, I haven't really done the acrylic paint enough to know how it would do with the dip liquids, but I know the gel liquids are not gonna cause it to smear and Really, I did these last night. I showered with them and I've been washing them. They don't have any activator on them anymore. So if I tried to activate them, I'm not really sure at this point what would happen with the acrylic paint on there. So we are just gonna use the gel polish. These Hangry Dip gel polishes have been my favorite so far that I've used. Um, most of the other ones that I've used, excuse me, most of the other ones that I have used, um, I've gotten off of Amazon, so. But I've tried a, a, probably almost every single time that they have on Amazon, all of the bigger brands anyway. I've tried Model Ones, I've tried Beatles, I've tried there's a babe nail that was actually, you know, for the price, it's really good. Um, and also tried um, Amelia. Is that how you say it? So we're gonna do a full cure on that um, for my 120 watt lamp. That's about 30 seconds. Now we're doing the gel top coat. And again, you want to get a thin coat. <gasps> That one definitely bled a little bit. You can't really tell a whole lot, but you can kind of see, I guess, from, um, it wasn't very apparent until I cured it. And then you could see the red that it bled. It kind of stinks. It's not that bad. So again, you want a very thin coat because you don't want it to pull to one side or the other. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 
slash cure that. So we are gonna do a 60 second cure. I don't know that I need 60 seconds. Um, sometimes I'll do a minute and a half, um, but just to make sure that it's completely cured, that top coat. But like I said, this 120 watt nail lamp usually cures it pretty fast. So it'd probably be fine after 30 seconds, but I go ahead and cure it at least for a minute just to make sure that it's completely cured. So yeah, if you have any questions about anything, make sure that you leave them in the comments. If you like this video, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe for my channel for videos more videos like this um so you can see how awkward and crazy that i am <laughs> um so there we are there's the finished product and as always i like to make sure that i finish it off with some cuticle oil um texas tippy chick sent me this one that's peppermint bark that's really smells really nice I like peppermint. You know, peppermint is more like a um, usually holiday or uh, more of a winter, Christmassy kind of flavor, but I like peppermint any time of the year. So that's going to be all for this Manny. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.